All right, a very, very good morning to you if you've just tuned in. Ten minutes to go until the polling stations open here in South Africa. And there are thousands, over 20,000 different polling stations in the country. And uh, they will be ready for you to go up there and cast your vote. It's very hard not to look at these elections in the context of 20 years of democracy. And we take our minds back to 1994. And you can imagine the huge task that lay ahead of the government at that time and of the IEC officials that were working on the elections to ensure that they were free and fair as South Africa moved into a democracy. Well, somebody who played a vital role in, uh, in the elections and the negotiations between the then National Party and the ANC was uh, the minister at that time of constitutional affairs and communication and he joins us now to talk more about those days Rolf Mayer so good to have you welcome thank you what does it feel like 20 years down the line uh, you're still here you're still seeing the democratic process underway and at that time there was a huge question mark that it was that it was going to work indeed I, I was sitting here uh, waiting for this interview to start and yeah. I was thinking back of how it felt 20 years ago, you know, and it, it feels like yesterday. I must admit, I, when I look at myself and I see all the gray hair, I know it's <laughs> different. <laughs> but, but, uh, but 20 years ago was, was as exciting as it is today. I mean, it, but, but of course, we, there, was, there was a lot of things that happened up to that moment. I mean, even prior to the election, the day before, there were the bombs at, at Johannesburg International Airport. Yeah. And, and lots of threats, even at the last minute, that we we're not going to have a peaceful election. Obviously, it turned out all for the better, and we had the most wonderful uh, approval, I think, of all South Africans for what we have done at that stage through the negotiations, reached a, a settlement in South Africa, the interim constitution was in place, and we were ready to go for the first democratic elections ever in South Africa. Take us behind those closed doors because you must have had sleepless nights. There must have been uh, negotiations that were constantly ongoing uh, between yourselves and the ANC and, and, and just to find that middle ground to ensure that these elections don't land up in a civil war because I think that was the greatest threat. What were decided? What were some of those decisions that were that were that were made behind these these closed doors? Well, I think if we look at at the, at the serious threats to the process at the time, to the negotiations, first there was a breakdown, complete breakdown, after the Boipatong massacre. That was in June of 1992, uh, and then uh, another incident that created huge pressure on, on the on the process was the assassination of Chris Arnie in April of 1993. So those moments were there and we every time had to get it right again. Uh, and it was only through dialogue and, and hard talks, uh, negotiations, that we succeeded. My personal view is that the main breakthrough, uh, the real breakthrough actually came in September of 1992 when President Mandela and President de Klerk signed the Record of Understanding, yeah. uh, which was a, basically an agreement about the framework for a new constitution for South Africa. And that helped us to overcome the suspicions and the uh, mistrust that prevailed up to that point. Once we had that agreement in place, we could start to work at the details. For the next year, it was about the details, yeah. filling in the details of the constitution. But of course, there were ongoing threats. Um, some, some parties withdrew from the process. They didn't participate for the most part of the last year uh, at that stage. And it was, uh, it, was, it was a difficult time even to get them back. Yeah. And we all re remember that at the very last minute only, Chief Butelezi decided to participate in the elections. That was, that was a major breakthrough, but at the very, very last, last at minute. At that last minute, which just, which just uh, I suppose, again, threw another, uh, uh, another uh, curveball into, into the negotiations exactly. and into the election. You, of course, remained in your position as the, as the Minister of Constitutional Affairs and Communication under the, uh, the, uh, the rule of Mandela at that time. What was that like? I mean, if you had to compare the rule of Madiba and the ANC mm. to that of the MP, I mean, you, you experienced both of them. I was fortunate to have had the experience of working with President Mandela before before the change actually came, because he was the he was the principal uh, nego negotiator for the ANC, and and on my side it was President de Klerk. So we had uh, very often meetings uh, at the, at that level. So I came to know President Mandela very well. Stepping into the position of of being his Minister of Constitutional Affairs was that therefore not that difficult. 
Uh, what provided some challenges, I must say, was the, was the fact that we now had to implement the new constitution. This new constitution that we had upon which President Mandela was elected as president now had to be implemented, for instance, by creating nine new provinces that didn't exist before. And, and all of that provided us a lot of challenges. And I can recall moments where I had to go and seek his advice, for instance, how to deal with uh, pertinent questions about the position of traditional leaders mm. in this new framework of provincial government and of new local governments that, that we're going to put into place. You know, so those were challenging times, but very interesting. And it was so dynamic. Uh, I think what we can say is that we successfully uh, succeeded in putting the new structures in place, implemented it, and uh, it was a very, fairly smooth transition yeah. from the old to the new. All right, now five minutes to go until the polling stations open here in South Africa. We're counting this moment down. We're counting down a very exciting election. How are you feeling? Um, I know that you told me in your first answer, it's almost like it's like you're back in 1994, mm. but you're not involved in active politics mm. anymore. Now you are a voting citizen. How does it feel? How excited are you to cast your vote today? You know, I, during the last few weeks, I, I think all of us as South Africans, uh, uh, let our minds go around what is happening in South Africa at the moment. We tested the parties in our own minds at least. And yes, I think the, there's a lot of things that are happening and uh, which makes one happy about the progress that have been made. At the same time, there are questions about where are we failing ourselves and how are we failing ourselves. So I think the question that we all have to put to our minds is where do we go after this election? Yes, we're going to cast our votes now. Yeah. But what, where are we going after this election? I think there are huge challenges in completing the path of transformation. The socio-economic transformation of the country is far from complete. We're seeing it every day. Uh, factors like poverty, unemployment, bad education, things like that are, are real pressures that will come up, particularly in the period ahead after this election. So what we're doing today is cast our vote, hope the party that comes to power will do what is required and implement what has been decided even prior to this. For instance, the National Development Plan, I yeah. think, is a major uh, for, uh, a platform from where we can look into the future. It's a question of implementing that plan. All right. Rolf Mayer, thank you so much for talking to us. Enjoy voting. Uh, you. You've got about five minutes or less than five minutes now before you can make your way to your polling station. And we've been getting reports from uh, our various sources and reporters out in the field.